<laughs> Cześć, jestem Damian i witam Cię w drugim odcinku warcabowych portretów. Dziś naszym gościem jest zawodnik z absolutnej czołówki świata, a na końcu materiału znajdziesz zapowiedź nadchodzącego konkursu dla osób, które subskrybują kanał. Zapraszam na odcinek! International Grandmaster from the Netherlands, Martijn van Eisendorn is my guest in the series of drafts portraits. Welcome Martijn in the second episode and thank you for accepting my invitation. No problem. I prepared a few questions for you. Some may be a little inconvenient, uh, some are really soft. No matter which of these you have, please give me absolutely true answers. Can we start? Yeah, sure. sure. Okay, so let's start with the first one. Recently the World Championship in Ivory Coast has ended. Are you satisfied with your performance? And if not, which place would satisfy you? Uh, well, I'm not really satisfied. Uh, I'm at sixth. Uh, my goal was to become world champion, and uh, unfortunately, uh, yeah, I, I didn't manage uh, to win uh, that many games. I also started really uh, bad, actually. Um, so six was, uh, I think, uh, the best result I, I could get. Such a tournament as World Championship involves playing many games. In this case, 19. Which game was the most disappointing for you? I think my loss against uh, Chichov was... Uh, yeah, I, I was very disappointed about it because I, I played a really good game. And uh, I think uh, I, I, during the game I felt like uh, I, I can win against him. And uh, uh, unfortunately it wasn't possible, so, so draw, I, I could easily make draw. But I didn't want that and uh, at the end I, I even lost, so I was very disappointed. No. And on the other hand, which was your best game of the competition and why? Uh, yeah, this is maybe a bit surprising, but uh, I think my game against Pan, uh, I was, uh, yeah, it was uh, a very good game. I surrounded him. Uh, it's a, yeah, a bit different than normally, but uh, I think I played uh, very well, but uh, I didn't finish in, uh, at the end. Uh, if I played uh, another move uh, at some point, then I think I could uh, yeah, make him more... Uh, yeah, he had more troubles, so uh, I think I would manage to win them. Yeah. If we are talking about Pan, he's a very young Chinese player. What do you think about the level of his game and his result? He is really that good? I think he's a very solid player. Uh, he knows a lot. Uh, he plays very strong. Um, but I also have to say that he had uh, some luck during the tournament. Uh, he won some games which, uh, yeah, were by, he won by easy combinations or he won in some position which was not good for him. Uh, so he had some luck, but uh, I think he's a good player, yeah. We will also remember this tournament because of the incidents at the end of it. What do you think about that, what happened? Yeah, it's really crazy. Uh, three rounds before the end of the tournament, it already started. Uh, at half past one, I think, uh, we had to play and uh, no players were allowed to, to go to the playing room because uh, there were some troubles with the hotel and the director, uh, with the organization and the director of the hotel. And after one hour it was solved, so, so everyone thought it was okay, but uh, actually it was not. And uh, just before the close ceremony, nobody uh, could leave the hotel and uh, the hotel was surrounded by military. I think it's the first time in my life that I experienced something like this. So yeah, it was... Uh, was well, not so, uh, yeah, such a pleasant situation. Will you ever play in Africa again after such incidents? Uh, well, after this incident, uh, I'm, I'm not so sure. Also, in May, I wasn't uh, really satisfied with the conditions. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, so I don't know, I don't know. Let's compare now drafts in Poland and the Netherlands. We know well how much time the top Polish drafts players spend on the game, but tell me how much do the best Dutch players train? I think uh, the top Dutch players uh, usually train during their study, uh, even two or three hours a day. I think uh, for uh, to prepare for World Championship, then they can easily train like eight hours a day. Yeah. So. We know that you train a lot and you play in many different tournaments during the year. Do you sometimes get bored of drafts? Uh, well, there are periods that, that I play a lot and I think like, uh, okay, let's uh, get some time off from drafts. Uh, but it's, it's never boring because I always find new ideas and uh, that's how I enjoy the game. If you find that many new ideas, will we ever get a book of Martin van Eisendorn? Uh, well, it could be the case if I, if I don't play anymore because uh, I, I don't like when uh, when people can uh, also use those ideas and then it's it's easier for them. Like, it becomes theory, and I don't want that actually. So the creativity and the opportunity to come up with new ideas is what you like the most in this game. Yes, now I can still surprise players uh, with with my openings. But if I uh, yeah make a book from my openings, then it's it's not so interesting anymore. I think. How much time does it take to invent the new openings? Usually players train in this way that they study books from which they learn what has been already played and not to try to find uh, new variants. It sounds as a totally game-changing level. How do you do it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, it's, it's uh, tough to say, but... Uh... I look at games and uh, then I always think like where, where can I, I find a new variant, how can I surprise new uh, players with that and uh, yeah, I always manage to find something and uh, I don't know how I do it actually. <laughs> Sometimes I'm also surprised. Yeah, there are so many possibilities that yeah, you can always find a new Yeah, always, variant. always. Yeah. I will ask you about the trainers. Do trainers from the older generations are still able to teach a lot you, the young ones? Um, I, don't, uh, I don't think uh, that they can teach me a lot. Uh, the most interesting is actually that, uh, for example, we train a group uh, in Holland with uh, all the top players and uh, we share our ideas uh, and yeah, we, we can actually learn from each other how, how some people uh, look at the posi position is, is with a different view and that, that's the most interesting thing actually. Let me ask you about these group trainings. When you train with other top Dutch players like Jan Hrunendijk, Rol Boomstra, Itzes Lump and others, do you share your new already invented ideas with each other? No, not all, uh, not all ideas, but uh... Uh, when we are analyzing a position and then we want to know what, what's possible and uh, how far we can go and yeah that's that's something we share but uh, what you want to share that you can absolutely decide uh, by yourself there are always some parts that you want to keep for yourself yes yes absolutely after all they are your opponents at the tournaments and i believe you still want to beat them yeah the Dutch population is about 17 million people, which is less than half of Polish one. How many active drafts competitors do you have in your country and uh, how popular game, or should I say sport, is drafts in the Netherlands? I think we have like, like, like four or five thousand uh, active players in, in Holland. So, uh, yeah, it's, compared to other sports it's, it's not very popular. Uh, I think that's also because uh, many children like to uh, play video games like, like Fortnite or FIFA and that's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's hard for, uh, for people uh, to attract uh, children to play draft. Yeah, we have the same problems with young ones in Poland. Do you know if the Dutch government does give any money for drafts? As I know, uh, they, they don't give anything. So only private sponsors? Um, yes. 
Yeah, I, I actually don't know how, how it works in, uh, in Holland. What I mean is, um, for example, if there is a young, talented player uh, who plays really incredibly, then how his training and tournaments participation are paid? Uh, well, the, the top players uh, who have a status, uh, they get money from NSA and NSF. Uh, it's a certain amount they give every year. I don't, I don't know exactly how much, but uh, uh, yeah, fr from this money we can uh, travel and uh, it's also uh, limited. Uh, but yeah, only, only the top players uh, get, get those uh, facilities. But there is some kind of money support. Yes, yes. Okay, tell me, what do you think about the drafts level in Poland? Uh, honestly, I think uh, uh, Dutch players are still ahead of Polish players. But when you look at youth championships, uh, Polish players are improving. Uh, a few years ago, I think the level was uh, way lower than Dutch players. But I, I think now they are even ahead of uh, Dutch uh, youth players. So yeah, they are, they are improving, uh, improving fast. Since I can only remember, uh, Poland has always won a lot of medals in youth competitions. But then something happens uh, and Polish drafts players don't develop their skills as well as, for example, Dutch ones. And uh, what, in your opinion, can be the reason of that? Yes, I'm also wondering how, how, how that's actually possible because uh, they're, at a young age they're, they're very good, uh, very talented, but maybe they don't uh, develop their, their talents and uh, they don't work enough, uh, they don't train enough or they don't have the, the trainers they, they need to have actually. Yeah, I think we in Holland we are, we are lucky, we have a lot of trainers. So. There are a lot of people in the Netherlands, also the older ones, that are still playing drafts, people who spend their time on the game, train, write books, organize the clubs and the tournaments, and the biggest drafts team competition. And maybe that's the problem in, in Poland, that, that you don't have enough trainers, and uh, uh, that's why they don't develop uh, at, at a later age. We are about to play in Polish national team competition. Is playing in this tournament any challenge for you? Uh, well, I, I think uh, I don't have that many problems uh, with those players, but uh, it's always uh, tough to, to, to beat those players because uh, they are good at end games, I think. Uh, so I, I still have to be careful. Yeah, and even yeah. though you are theoretically much better player and always can be tough to win all the games in the tournament. Yeah, and drafts is always hard to win and you know, hard to win the game. So I think it won't be easy. I'm, I have more knowledge, I think, but it's it's never easy to win. You will be one of two international grandmasters playing in the competition. What is more, playing for the same team. And as we speak about your team, please tell me what is the name of the team. <laughs> <laughs> you are playing for. <laughs> Well, <laughs> as I know, it's Admiral <laughs> Szczecin. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see <laughs> Sorry, I didn't see can, can you repeat it? <laughs> Admiral Szczecin. Szczecin? Szczecin. Okay. Yes. I won't judge you, I will ask Jacek Pawlicki what he thinks about it. <laughs> and now let's come to short, simple questions. What is your biggest draft dream? Uh, yeah, I still want to become world champion. Uh, I, th I think uh, I can do it, but uh, I still didn't manage. So. When? Yes, as soon as possible, actually. Two years later. Yeah, yeah. Who, in your opinion, is the best drafts coach? Uh, yeah, in Holland we have two of them, uh, Rick Lundis and uh, Rob Clerk. I've uh, had many tournaments where, where they coached me and... Um, yeah, they do it uh, both uh, in another way. I think uh, Rick is, uh, yeah, he's the guy who talks a lot. Uh, that yeah, also really helps. But uh, uh, Rob is more like 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 straight. He, he doesn't need that many words to make himself clear. And it both works actually. Uh, okay, so here comes the last, and I would say the toughest question of all. 
Who is the best woman in the world? <laughs> I would say Natalia Sedowska. You really say so? As I remember, she is no more the world champion. <laughs> I... <laughs> well, um, what, what's, what's pretty uh, good from her is, uh, I think maybe four years ago she was, yeah, at a really, not, not at the top level, uh, she started really low, but uh, she trained very hard, uh, like, like two years to become world champion, and, and she became world champion. So, uh, I think I admire the hard work she did. <laughs> okay, do you think that someday she will beat you? No. <laughs> Martin, thank you very much for the interview. It was really nice to host you. Sure. <laughs> Please say some goodbye word to the channel viewers and tell them, of course, to subscribe the channel. See you. Uh, like this video, subscribe and thumbs up. Dziękujemy Martinowi za udział w serii, a dla cierpliwych obiecana zapowiedź konkursu. Już w najbliższym odcinku będziecie mogli wygrać warcabową książkę rosyjskiego arcymistrza ze specjalną dedykacją dla widzów kanału. Konkurs tylko dla tych, którzy subskrybują kanał, więc już teraz zaloguj się na YouTube, kliknij pod spodem subskrybuj i widzimy się w konkursowym odcinku. Do zobaczenia!